Good morning. Welcome to worship. So glad to gather with you in this digital way. My name is Nate Lidke. I'm the pastor at New Life Lutheran Church in Norwalk, Iowa. We have been for several weeks walking through the Gospel of Luke, looking at the different meal stories that we find in that Gospel. We've been exploring Jesus' table fellowship with others. We've been exploring kingdom values that Jesus teaches to his followers. Today, we come to this table. We come to the table of the Lord. I am so glad to gather with you in this digital way and pray that this time might be meaningful for you. I would love for you to have a Bible next to you. I would love for you to find uh, some grape juice, some wine, some cracker, or some bread. So that at the end of our time together, we might commune one another in a digital way. I am so glad to gather with you on this day and to come to you from this place. Some of you have fond memories of gathering in, in this room. For weddings, for funerals, for baptisms. We come together for holidays and for sacred days and, and just for regular old Sundays too. We have fond memories of being here in this place, in this room. We're not able to gather right now. I hope and pray that we will soon, but right now, our best calling is to love our neighbor, and part of loving our neighbor is advocating for those who are weak and vulnerable. And so right now, we're not able to gather, but we recall the times when we have. Jesus and his disciples at the Last Supper, the table story that we're gonna that we're gonna look at today, are remembering being uh, the Hebrew people being set free from captivity in Egypt. Jesus and his disciples are celebrating a Passover meal in which they remember, they recall what God has done for them, how God has rescued his people. Today, as we gather in this place, I hope and pray that you might remember, recall, and, and celebrate God continuing to rescue, to save, to advocate for, to speak on behalf of, and to love God's people. On this Sunday, we come to this table, and at this table, we receive the gift of Christ in bread and in wine, we receive the gift of Christ made present in our lives. I am so glad to gather with you from this table this morning. Let's begin with a word of prayer. I'm going to invite you to sing this beautiful song that, is, that has uh, been an overarching theme of our, of our sermon series, At the Table. But let's pray together. Most holy, good, and gracious God, in the midst of these moments, we come to you. We ask that your Spirit might descend upon us. We ask that your love might enliven us. We ask that your grace might give us courage and strength to meet this day. Lord, guide us and protect us and speak to us in these moments. Fill us with your presence. Guard us and fill us with hope. Lord, allow all of the distractions of this week to flow to the background so that we might focus on you, so that we might learn from you and from your word. God, all of this we pray in the holy, precious, and strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Journey Sunday School students to create either in Lego or in drawing some pictures of the text that we're going to focus on from Luke chapter 22 today. I'd love for you just to take a look at some of them, the, some of the creations that they that they put together. He broke the bread and said to his disciples, "Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me." Aren't they cute? And don't they ex exemplify Jesus giving his disciples a new way to understand the, the Passover meal? Let's explore what that Passover meal was, what it became in the time of Jesus, and what it is for us today. The Passover meal celebrated from the events some 1300 years prior to the time of Jesus, was a time of celebration for the Hebrew people, for the Jewish people, in which they remembered God rescuing them, God rescuing their people from the bonds of slavery, setting them free from the oppression of the, of the, Egyptian, um, of the Egyptian army, of the Egyptian rule. The Passover meal is a meal some 1,300 years in the making. And the Passover meal is a meal all about remembering. I want to show you a little picture I came across this week that depicts or that shows in a visual way how in celebrating a Passover meal, Jesus and his disciples, that they would be remembering God delivering them from the hands of the Egyptians. In that very meal and in the actions and the order of that meal, they were remembering all that God had done for them. Now, as Jesus gathers with his disciples in our text for today, Jesus gives his disciples something new. A new way of thinking about this meal. A new way of understanding God at work in the world. And not just remembering something that happened long ago, but something that happens in the here and now. Something that happens even today. Let's take a look at the text from Luke chapter 22. I'd love for you to follow along. It starts in verse 7. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, 
he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. As Jesus is eating this meal with his disciples, I think it might be appropriate for you to recall some of the favorite meal times that you have had with your family. I think it might be appropriate for you to recall some of the, some of the celebrations that have centered around food. Do you have a favorite dish that kind of always needs to be prepared when you gather together as family? Do you have a favorite dessert that, you know, maybe a certain aunt or a certain uncle, a certain family always prepares? I'd love for you to take just a few moments in your living room just to think about the different places and the different times and the different meals that you have eaten. Meals are holy and sacred times. Meals are places where we celebrate. Meals are places where we gather together to, to be filled both physically but also to be filled with the relationships that are, that, that are, that are strengthened in the bonds of, of a mealtime dinner. Push pause for just a moment. Would you think about a couple of these discussion questions that are, that are going to be on your screen just for a moment? Now, let's think about some of the ways that mealtime has changed just in these last couple of months. Many of us have longed for, many of us have yearned to be with others as we gather for mealtimes. And at the same time, I know in my family, we have gathered together routinely for meals in these last weeks, well, these last months, let's be honest. And it's been an absolute joy. Now, one of the things that I love about gathering together is my wife's cooking. It is extraordinary. It is magnificent. I can't get enough of it. You can probably tell. As meals have changed just a little bit in their meaning and in their significance, in these last few weeks. I want us to think too about how Jesus, tra Jesus transforms that meal that the disciples are eating, that meal in which they remember things from the past, how Jesus transforms that into something new. As 
they were eating, Jesus took bread and he, and he took a cup. And he asked them to divide those things amongst themselves. And he gave them new instruction, new meaning around the table. He took some bread and, and, he, and he broke it and he blessed it and he gave it to them and he said, this bread, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he, he took a cup and he, and he blessed it and he, and he gave it to them and he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Do you remember that picture I showed you of the, the Passover meal really being a way in which the, the memory of the Hebrew people being rescued from the bonds of slavery comes to them at that table? Jesus transforms that Passover meal into something new. And so no longer are we remembering God freeing the Hebrew people from the bonds of slavery but we're remembering the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, which sets us free, which calls us to live into a new reality. You see, Jesus changed and transformed that reality of that Passover meal into something new and gives to us the opportunity to live into, again, something new. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus which frees us from our sins. I want to explore one other piece of that meal, which is really important. As Jesus eats with his disciples, he knows that they are the ones who are about to betray him, abandon him, deny him. They know that they are the ones who are about to, to leave him. And that love, I love that Jesus still entrusts that meal, celebrates that meal with those who are about to betray, abandon, and leave him. That tells us something about who God in Jesus Christ is for you and for me. That tells us that God in Jesus Christ loves and cares for even the sinner amongst us. That tells us that God in Jesus Christ welcomes everyone to the table. You see, we don't have to straighten ourselves up before we're worthy to receive this gift from this table. We don't have to deem ourselves worthy. We don't have to do the right things. We don't have to say the right things. We don't have to live the right way. God in Jesus Christ claims us as we are. And then just as God in Jesus Christ transforms that old way of thinking, that, that Passover meal into something new, God in Jesus Christ transforms you and me. In the eating and drinking of this bread and wine, in the eating and drinking of this holy sacrament, we are changed. We are made different. We are renewed. We are transformed. In the eating and drinking of bread and wine, we are given the promise and the hope of new life. For in the eating and drinking of this sacrament, we receive these gifts, forgiveness, life, and salvation. In the eating and drinking of this holy sacrament, our sins are forgiven. We are transformed then, transfixed, made new. God's grace has got a hold of us. We are forgiven of our sins, and when our sins are forgiven, where our sins are forgiven, we are given these promises of life and salvation. You see, those two things, they go hand in hand. The promise and the hope of eternal life, the promise and the hope of resurrection, the promise and the hope of salvation, the promise and the hope of new life after this life transforms us here and now. 
It gives us purpose and meaning and significance. It gives us cause. It gives us, it gives us understanding. It, it transforms us into something new. How might you live into that promise that comes to us at this table? How might you live into that promise that you are transformed, you are made different, you are made new in the eating and drinking of bread and wine? This ordinary meal, bread and wine, is transformed into something extraordinary in which you and I receive these extraordinary gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Thanks be to God for the gift of this meal. Thanks be to God for this table where all are welcomed, where all are given the promise and the hope of transformation, of new life, of forgiveness, and of salvation. Thanks be to God for this table. Let's spend some moments in prayer together. Remember, I am inviting you each day throughout the month of May to set an alarm at 3.53 in the afternoon so that you and I might be in prayer together at the very same moment for leaders in this community, for those in need in this community, for the church, for the world, for all of those in, in need. Set an alarm at 3.53 and be in prayer with me and with so many in this congregation as we uplift this community in our prayers. For our prayers this day, I will lead several different intercessions, and at the end of each intercession, I will respond, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. Let's pray. Uplifted, uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying now for the church and for the world and for all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth, Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to the oppressed. And speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost, and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises, to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and the imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ our Lord. So many of you have been so very generous in these moments, even as we have not gathered together. So many of you have taken it upon yourself to set up an online giving account to give over Venmo or to, um, or, or to, to mail in a, a check to, uh, to the church. The ministry of this congregation continues. I pray that you might continue to support this ministry, to support this congregation in both your financial gifts as well as through your prayers. Please continue to hold this ministry in your prayers. Please continue to support this church through your gifts and through your offerings. Thank you for your continued generosity. Now, my friends, if you have gathered bread or wine, cracker or grape juice, whatever means you have available, 
I would invite you to lift those elements towards the screen as you are able, knowing that God works in mysterious and in bold ways, trusting that God is at work in and through the bread and wine, in and through the cracker, the juice, whatever you have available, in order to give you the gifts of forgiveness and life and salvation. We remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we remember his death, as often as we eat and drink of this meal, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes. I invite you to pray with me the prayer in which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Good friends, receive this invitation to the table, and then I would invite you to simply share bread and wine with those with whom you are gathered with this day. Sharing bread and saying the body of Christ given for you, sharing wine or grape juice, whatever you have available, saying the blood of Christ shed for you. Come now to the banquet. Behold the risen Christ.
Let's pray now, having received this gift of communion. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened to us your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I am inviting you to continue to um, support the food pantry in particular. We're asking you to give um, peanut butter and jelly. Um, the drop boxes are available throughout the week outside of the church. You don't need to uh, come into the church. I would invite you to drop off peanut butter and jelly to support the food pantry. I want to invite you to continue to support um, the ministries of this congregation. And I'd love for you to connect and to check in. We have an Owl's Coffee on Friday. Uh, Friday morning, our older, wiser Lutherans come together for, for a cup of coffee and for, and for some fellowship. Uh, some of the youth in the youth group are collecting pop cans. And so um, if you have some pop cans and you want to either let me or Matt Hill, our council president, know um, that you have some pop or soda cans, um, we'll come and pick those up and, uh, and take those to the, to the Redemption Center for you. I also want to invite the men of this congregation to get together on a Zoom call again um, on Thursday evening of this week. And I want to invite you to continue to think about ways in which you might help this congregation even as we close. We have an opportunity right now to care for or to tend to the building in particular. We have several different projects that are happening. In fact, this weekend, the ceiling of the sanctuary is being uh, stripped and painted and repaired in, in some way. Uh, as well, uh, Emily and Sarah and a few others are redecorating, redoing the, um, the sanctuary. There's lots of different projects and landscaping projects and other things that, are, that we need your help with. Please contact me if you are able to, uh, to volunteer in any way. One other thing I do want to invite you to be doing, if you are able to sew or if you're able to create, um, we are going to be asking when we regather. We're going to be asking folks to be wearing masks when we regather. And so we're going to need a supply of masks to give out to folks who will gather with us. And so if you have a way or if you have the opportunity to provide masks, we would sure appreciate your uh, making of those masks and dropping off those masks for us um, here, at, um, here at the church. Is it going? Yeah. Hey, friends, I almost forgot. Birthdays. I love doing birthdays. I know that we can't be together, but it's still so important for us to celebrate one another and accomplishments and, and birthdays. And so, hey, today we got a couple of special birthdays. Hey, this is Catherine Leverman. Uh, Catherine uh, has a birthday on the 18th, and we're so thankful for you, Catherine, and all of your work on the Board of Education and on the Church Council and you and your beautiful family. We hope you have a great and God bless them beautiful birthday on the on the 18th. Hey, Aaron Clausen has a birthday. Aaron Clausen has a birthday on the 19th. Happy birthday, Aaron. We love you and we miss you and we hope that your babies are doing really, really well. Um, Garrett Westfold has a birthday on the 20th. Garrett, happy graduation. Happy end of your senior year. And happy birthday on the 20th. Hey, um, oh, Clint. Clint's birthday's on the 19th. Some of you know Clint as Mr. D. Happy birthday, Mr. D on the 19th. And this last one, oh, this is an awesome picture of Jewel. Jewel's got a birthday on the 20th. You see it? Jewel's got a birthday on the 20th. This is a fish that he caught with his with his grandpa. Jewel, happy birthday to you. We miss you. We love you. We miss you all and we love you all. Happy birthday! Throw the photos. Throw the photos. Warren, Vanessa, Sheldon, Dean. Jacob, Eva, Jocelyn, and Garrett. May God bless you with a humble spirit, a grateful heart, a dedicated mind, and willing hands of service as you pursue what is commendable in God's eyes. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, and you welcomed the children. Your invitation included each one of us. Your guiding hand has continually been upon these young men and women. 
You have sustained them. You have shared in their laughter and wiped away their tears. In times of confusion, you have offered direction. In times of sorrow, you have offered hope. In times of doubt, your Holy Spirit has lifted them up. Grant, O Savior, to these graduates the knowledge of your continued presence as they go forth into the future. Bless them and keep them, guide their steps, hold them in the hollow of your hand. Amen. Receive these these words of blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you and keep you safe. May the Lord guide your every step and may you always know of our unending love for you. Amen. Good friends, on this Sunday, receive these words of blessing, then go in peace and serve the Lord. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever.